How much money do you want to race around the top, all the way around and back? You and me right now? Yep. How much? I mean, is this like a trick question? Because that's I'm gonna, not a trick I'm question. Are you a big you. runner? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big runner too. I'll Are you? To, I have to take my boots uh, off. Ah, no, you have to run in the boots then. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, I'm not a big runner. How much? I don't. Well, I was gonna go super high. Like ten grand <laughs> or a million? <laughs> like a million? Oh, I can't go that high. Right. Let's let's uh, let's have a race when it's done. When you it's and I will have yeah. a race. We'll have a race. <laughs> Maybe it'll be in the next vlog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna practice until then. <laughs> right. You do that. All have right, you ever run a marathon? Right. Uh, no. I've done marathons. marathons yeah. Okay. Like yeah. I haven't even done that, so you yeah. probably school me. <laughs> there you go. Mitch is runner. I'm not. The end. Vlog, what is up? I am out here at Tech City. We were out here just a few months ago giving you a tour of this place when it was still dust. <laughs> and and I'm out here, I'm psyched because now we got solar trees. We got, I mean, it, it's almost finished, at least the first the first phase of it. Yeah, yeah so Mitch yep. is here. Yep. Mitch, say Good what up to see everybody. Vlog. Hey, vlog. And, and so I asked him, I was like, hey, man, I would really like to come and see the progress. The uh, the Tech City vlog that we did in the early yep. phase, everybody was super excited about it, right? Everybody yep. was commenting like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. It was really hot. What's going on out there? I want to know what's going on. Yep. So I said, hey, man, we got to do like a little follow up to kind of see the progress and, and show Gainesville what's going on. So uh, so he's well, going to give us- a lot has happened since you were here. Yeah, he's going to give us yeah. a little tour. So yeah. let's go check it out. Yeah, let's have fun. So last time we were more or less painting a picture for you, right? Right, right, right. So a lot of these things were just going up. These are the solar trees that, I mean, what they even got, you got printed in the newspaper and yep, stuff yep. over them and stuff. So, so Lex Dold, we've talked a lot about him. He actually did the Cade Museum sign and a lot of other things. Used to own, I believe, a bike for more, a bicycle shop in Gainesville. Oh, that's cool. So he's, I call him the uh, MacGyver of Gainesville because the guy is so talented. And so he, from scratch, actually built these solar trees. They still have to be wired in, as you can see, some of the string, pull strings. And what is it? Is it like aluminum or? Yeah, that's all steel. So these oh, are extremely dang. heavy and it will, uh, of course, withstand 135 mile an hour uh, hurricane winds if, if that were to happen up here. We've already had some strong storms come through and they're just, I mean, they don't even flinch. So these are 36 inch round solar panels. There's 12 per tree. We have five of them. They're getting all wired together and they basically go into the grid. And of course we still have charging stations to come along the front here for electric vehicles. That's and, cool. And those kinds of things as well. So that's really cool. Um, you know, tethered together, they basically run about a 2,500, maybe 3,000 square foot office. Dang. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and then of course the promenade last time. Remember when we were here last time, we were like tripping over stuff. Yeah. Like the dirt. Uh, there was just <laughs> dirt here. So if you go back and look, it's pretty wild. Um, to take the same spot, I think there were there were steamrollers and all kinds of stuff going through <laughs> yeah. here. So the last time we talked about this promenade, okay, we talked about the bifacial solar. So this is the, the largest use of bifacial solar in Alachua County, all of Alachua County, but possibly in the state of Florida, because what happens is we're collecting the ray not only from the sun side, but also the bounce off the earth through here because we're, we're so far off, we're able to capture that energy that's bouncing off. Dang. And so I always explain it, you ever get a suntan on a, on a cloudy day? And it's the same kind of concept with that ray bouncing down and through here. So what's really cool is we talked about the solar going from high to low and you can see that through the rafters. This allows this area to breathe and when the solar like today was you know triple digit heat you get that heat on those solar and it's literally bringing air through this area and you can hear it so uh there goes the drone <laughs> <laughs> so uh this promenade these get ballard uh bollards up here and so uh, 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 vehicles uh. will be prohibited from coming through here Got so it. right now you see the the, the lull down there and yeah. during the day you see some you know last minute construction trucks and so forth cool but we're very very excited about the way this all turned out you have patios every other see how it ducks in over here and then yeah, this you comes see that, out. Josh? 
So every other one kind of has like a little patio and it ducks in and out and it's the opposite of the other side. I do want to share this with you. A very few people know this. What's that? But the building over here, these buildings, these neighboring buildings, since I had you out here last time, yeah. have been bought, okay? 280,000 square feet of space has been bought by a cannabis company. Dang. And 280,000 square feet will probably be the largest production facility on the east coast of the United States wow. for cannabis production. So we're excited about them being a neighbor. They're having a planning session, I believe, tomorrow or the next day about their uh, ambitious goals to, to turn that park into a real vibrant um, uh, production facility. And so we're going to learn more about that and also find a way that, for instance, the housing okay so some of the folks might actually work over there and be part of tech city that way oh, but cool. also think about the number of employees that will be over there and then we're going to have food trucks and activities over here that they can partake so that's already happening and then there's a company that's currently in there get this called incel and incel went over the neighboring property and got a couple hundred thousand square feet for their new um they're expanding company. Dang, that's cool. So you're talking near a uh, half a million square feet adjacent to Tech City that is going to absolutely bustle with activity over the next six to 12 months. And we just, this, this just could not be unfolding any better for us. Cool, man. Yeah, very, it's, very It's cool. exciting. Yeah. We it's just really, really cool even sitting in like, with, now it's all painted and you got all the columns yeah. done. And, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy how much has changed in just a couple of months. Yeah. I mean, you it's You want to take nuts. a look at some inside space? Yeah, yeah, let's definitely go inside. So, um, last time we had talked about um, uh, some of the items coming in here, but the one cool thing. Oh my gosh, dude. That is sick. <laughs> Dude, that is awesome. How long, dude, how long did it take them to? Five days. Five days? Yeah, five That's days. it? That's incredible. So Ben Franklin, in my opinion, is absolutely the godfather behind entrepreneurship. He is the icon, he's the American icon behind invention, philanthropy, community involvement. He was a governor. He, you know, he's an inventor. He was a brilliant man of his time. Now, mind you, most people would think that he was born maybe 150, 200 years ago. He was born over 300 years ago. But uh, we're gonna have several items. So when you walk in here, we're gonna have the Model T right here, okay? And so we're gonna pay homage to a lot of the technologies over the decades that has made the fabric of America. So over here is gonna be a tractor, 1937 tractor. And we're going to talk about uh, agriculture and the impact of a, you know of agriculture to America and the and the efficiencies that uh, have been gained through time. And then we're going to have an old uh, replica of the Wright brothers plane for aviation. We're going to have an old uh, a model rocket, a big Apollo 11, talking about aerospace. Over here is going to be the original uh, 1984. Uh, Apple Macintosh computer, Let's go. and then next to that's going to be a kind of an old typewriter, and then the old cash register we talked about yeah, last yeah. time, the 1912. So are you and it just keeps going around. And we have all kinds so of. It's items. like a, it's like a mini museum. It, it's a museum for entrepreneurship, and that's, that's cool. the key for us. There's going to be an old phone booth right here with a payphone in it. A lot of people don't even know what a payphone is hardly <laughs> anymore, right? In front of each one of the items is going to be, uh, it will showcase a storyline. And some of it will tell the pros and cons, right? Because, you know, the automobile has, of course, contributed a lot to our, you know, global warming and some of the things that we're having to battle with because of the emissions. But on the positive side, he brought 15 million automobiles. Think about that. 15 million automobiles to the average family in America. And that was in the early 1900s. I don't know how many people there were, but 15 million families enjoyed that luxury. And so mobility, and you're in the scooter business, you know about yeah. mobility, right? So mobility is really part of um, the fabric of America. So we talk about aviation, we talk about aeronautics and going into space and those kinds of things as well. So entrepreneurship is not um, just something simple like you're building a widget, right? 
So we want to showcase different ideas and opportunities, you know, to take the old 1912 cash register and make computing a whole different animal, right? Yeah. And that's what we have today. That's cool. So who knows what tomorrow will really bring and what kinds of ideas and entrepreneurship there will be. These color schemes have changed just a little bit where the top blue will remain the same and the, and the solar panels will but the the lower part actually changes color okay so the next building the top band let's say will be like a uh, a mustard yellow or you know a nice oh, a nice okay. color and these beams will match the top that goes around the rim dude this is awesome <laughs> i think we came in here last when, when we were here last time there was like literally you could, there were just the the sheet rock not oh, even the, the not studs, even the studs, the studs just right, the studs Where's the basketball court go? <laughs> vlog, this is Aaron. <laughs> Want to say hi to the vlog? Hi, vlog. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good enough. Yeah, yeah, that, that's cool. You know what this is? This is one of the items I wanted to make right here. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah. That's cool. So this, I don't know how to open up. I don't know which way. Ah. Oh, oh, dang, look at that. So this is a, of course, an old sewing machine. And so we're going to actually talk about, through entrepreneurship, apparel, right? So think how apparel has changed. So, you know, 100 years ago, companies like Levi Strauss were real big and so forth, but they would make bolts of fabric and people would buy that and and they would sew clothes my mother sewed my clothes till I was in the seventh oh, dude, grade i remember yeah. my i remember my yeah. grandmother she was a huge sewer this is just another example to showcase you know young entrepreneurs like things they wouldn't typically think of right these are the hallmark iconic items that transform our country and so those, those ways of becoming automated uh, through time and invention, and then that invention going out through the entrepreneur to find a marketplace for it, was really at the heart of what we're trying to drive out here. Look how much space this is, man. Yeah. It's gonna be cool when they get well, it all filled up. Get you out here. I know, man. Want me to show you your space? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, show me my space. Ronald, let's go check out our future office. <laughs> he just likes to get me all excited. Oh, like, sure. Why wouldn't I? Let me get Colin all hyped up on, on his space. So, what we have here is 17,000 square feet. Of uh, wall. That ain't enough for me. Uh, no. <laughs> that's the reason we're gonna. 17,000. No, we're only gonna temporarily put you in there. And we're putting our whole movie studio in here. Ah, oh, it's my sandbox. That's what I've been waiting for. We're going to do volleyball in here temporarily. <laughs> <laughs> We're currently talking to a lot of different companies, right? So if they want something that's obviously smaller than 17,000, this is easy to do. It takes us 10 weeks to turn, turn it for them. So if they signed a deal today, two and a half months later, they're in. Square peg, square hole. Tell me what you want and we'll build it out. They can keep the urban warehouse design or they can come in here and do class drop A ceiling. office and put yeah. in drop ceilings True. and have a more formal, you know, office. But <laughs> what's really cool is some of the folks we're talking to are larger footprints, right? You know, 40, 50,000 square feet. Right. And so logically those companies don't have all the employees that they would have like right out of the chute. So we would say, look, let's give you 10,000 square feet, right? Just do some office systems in here. You get going. And in seven months, I can turn 60,000 square feet on. Seven months, we're done. So it's already been approved, right? So we've got all the planning, all the architectural, everything. The only thing that's not in there is the interior lines. Like, where do you want your offices? Where do you want your bathrooms and break mm -hmm. rooms? Other than that, the parking, the landscape. Do the, you guys you guys help with that part, though? Oh, of course we do. Okay. Yeah. Because I mean, I'd be like, I don't know where to put anything. No, that's right. <laughs> so... Each one of these is 25 feet wide, okay? So you would, uh, and then it's 100 feet long. So 2,500 square feet would That's get each you. section. Would be one section, which is pretty wide. So you guys and are designing you, it long ways, basically. If you get out here and realize, you know, what you're looking at. I ain't walking out there. I got that in my shoes. <laughs> look at all this glass here, right? I mean, it's one thing to look at that where there would be bathrooms and electrical boxes. Right. But if you come out here, 
vlog. Come on out. Let me show you this. You're not gonna get your shoes. <laughs> he needs his own vlog. He's so used to this already. He's like, he's like, vlog, come here, vlog. So in all sincerity, look at all the glass along here, right? Yeah. It's all cool. the whole way. So nobody would really want to give that up to just say I won't be on the parking lot. Yeah, yeah, no way. And and believe it or not, most people are gonna take, you know, there are people who take I took twenty five hundred. And then the reason that is that's a corner and that's going to be like the leasing office and all that. But you see right? people taking 2,500 and having it on a both sides. Place. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, that's cool. In fact, we're talking to folks at that size. Yeah. And you just, we just come in here, put up the wall and then you, you know, you're off to the races. So it's pretty cool. I mean, and that's pretty smart too, because from an expansion standpoint, like you even said, like yeah. they're already talking about when they can correct expand i mean yeah. to be able to expand and knock down a wall and just move so, over so they have ten thousand now let's say they want another five we put we come down to we put up a wall you pop through wherever they want a uh, opening and it's done yeah that's the other thing is long term folks are going to come in here they're going to get 2500 square feet like you are <laughs> and you're going to go hey no i'm ready for five thousand <laughs> And we'll put you in 5,000, we'll give that up and we'll lease that to somebody else to start out their company. Yeah, so, so. that's the really cool part about it because there's, we've talked about it before. And I don't know, I think we talked about it in the last yeah. vlog, right? There's five of these buildings. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So it's just like when the next building. 300,000 square feet total of tech space, right? We've built- How much? 300,000 and we've built 60,000. So there's four more to go, 240,000 more to go. And then 252 housing units and then a preschool, which is uh, gonna be under construction in a, in a few weeks, like three weeks. That's cool. So. Cool, man. Don't get your shoes dirty, guys. So this is fracture space, of course. And um, so they have office systems through here, through their core of their, of this office side, right? Because they have it broken in three different areas. So they, yeah. have, they have their offices and they have production and then they have a warehouse and then I'll show you all of that. They've made so much progress. This is so cool. So this is their production floor. So obviously off the warehouse, we'll go back there in a minute, we'll come. Over here on the right is where all the glass comes in. So they'll take their big sheets of glass, they score it, cut it, and then they take the edges, right? Right. They sand those edges down so they're not sharp and can be handled. So they got all that. And then they put in. it, there will be dishwashers or washers in here. So they'll take it and wash all that glass and they prep it and then they bring it over here to these clean rooms. So these are three clean rooms. So they're rooms. leaving this very open. They're, yes. not, they're not really sectioning this off. They're like. Nope. This is going to be it. So the production will come straight through for packaging once all of it has been printed and has to be mat back matted and all of that as well. This is a very sustainable building, okay? So remember the tech city is being um, energized by solar, right? Like completely. People, you know, there's there are communities talking about what percentage they have of renewables and how, what percentage are, you know, uh, that sustainability level. We're, we're pushing the envelope to be 100%. In a solar environment, for it to be effective, right, you can't really over solar because they won't pay you very much back into the system. So you have to be careful with that. So we're right sizing these buildings, but we give the maximum opportunity. So if you look, all of the mechanical, the electrical, and plumbing is down a 15 foot chase through, through here. Okay. All the bathrooms, all the kitchen, right? All the plumbing. The electrical runs, if you come here, you see the electrical boxes and everything? Yeah, yeah. If you come right here, out here, notice the panels. Oh okay. yeah, okay. So all this is running right down one side of the building. MEP, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, is all within this truncated area, right? It allows for no penetration to the roof, 100% solar up there, right? So how many times have you seen a home, an apartment building, a, a, if you look even on Google Earth and you see solar panels and they're hopscotching around yeah, all yeah, the penetrations. Yeah. So we allow maximum solar capability on these projects because rarely can you produce enough solar to actually feed a building. A rooftop of a traditional building is not enough to fire up the building inside unless you do some of the things we're doing. Bifacial solar, so we're capturing solar on both sides, and this ability to run maximum, I mean, just like a solar farm, 
this one right next to each other and that sun's just beaming straight down on the Dang. whole plate and the solar trees of course are going to play an important role into that too it just looks so pristine like it's so clean even like the wiring and the <laughs> yeah it's just it's awesome yeah. man we've worked really hard and they have too. To yeah, be honest, yeah. they have worked really, really hard. This is their warehouse. Just a traditional warehouse space. Has a lot of clear. Yesterday, they actually had this U-Haul back in here. And they were unloading inside the building. So the ability for trucks to literally pull in here and take product and load it, you know, it's yeah. just gonna be so nice for them. So we're actually trying to source um, and repurpose some old buried pipe, okay? We found some, but we really need more. So it's gonna be a challenge possibly, but we're gonna get some pipe about five foot around, right? So you literally could walk through it, okay? Yeah. Five feet. And then take that round piece of pipe, do about eight or 10 feet of it, mount it on the I-beam, and then you paint all the way around it. Okay, so you have this 360 mural, one after another, after another, after another. So no matter where you are, where you're standing, if you saw one, you could see the public art because you have the 360. And they won't just be around the commons area, okay? Yeah. They won't be up, a ne up next to the nature preserve just totally. They're gonna be sporadic throughout Tech City. And then you'll be able to go up and there'll be a small plaque there and it will say, hey, this is for Colin Austin. He was a loser, but now he's a rock star. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, something exactly like that. Exactly like yeah. that. The yeah. direct quote. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> you celebrate public art and the celebration of entrepreneurship. Yeah, that, you just can't beat that. So right here, remember last time, so right here, this gets parking in a driveway up to the, um, this is a preschool going here. So, and then the playground goes behind it. Uh, so this is gonna be really, really neat. When you see the design of this, I don't even really want to tell you until you see it. So we're gonna bring you back out here and do another one. But you're gonna see, uh, it's really neat how it, how it actually interplays with the existing building. But when you see it, you know right. that it's a preschool. Remember the public art I just told you about? So when you come along here, how cool is that gonna be? Not to mention we could have some sitting areas and so forth because this is a pretty long healthy walk around right and then that nature preserve is right there and so we're going to take advantage of that as well that's cool um, we're going to turn that into an asset of the property which a lot of people see it as a negative right but um, when you get back there and see the amount of wildlife that we're actually um, you know getting close in on this jogging trail it's going to be just incredible so again, that's what you're saying. The, the trail's foot, gonna be on top of this. Yeah, about like all, a five. Basically, foot what you see, like all the way around, it'll be on top of it. It's cool. Right in here, as this dips in a little bit, and going to that tree that's standing, will be two um, apartment buildings. Okay, so those would be about three stories. They'll actually be able to overlook this, right? And so there will be then on the right hand side will be a parking bank, and then the next two buildings of of the Tech City are off on the right here so again the whole interplay out here is nature you know meets creative world yeah. and so uh, we're doing that with different kinds of housing from apartments to homes to stilt homes all of that so people have a lot of variety of choice how long has it been the whole process so far so we closed on the property in september this is this is june 1st 3rd june 3rd <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Nine months. Dang, dude, this is in. crazy. Yeah. Nine months and yeah. already you're here yep. at this stage. Yep. Dang. We announced basically last June that we were like, okay, we're going to do this. And then we kind of went to work. Well, we didn't kind of go to work. We went to work, right? But we closed on the property in September and here we are June. It's not even been a year since we announced it. It was June fifth a year ago, believe it or not. Wow. We held we held a press conference and said, okay, we're doing this. Is, this. Yeah, this is this is kind of hey, we're gonna go this direction. 
and then everybody put their hand in the middle and they said we're in and at that point that's when i had to get busy it's yeah. super cool to just come out here and see everything i mean the fact that it's been that fast and see it all come together is really really awesome i'm stoked to see the next yeah. phase and see it develop well, from, and, yeah from this vantage point when you when you see those next buildings go up and they start interplaying with each other right. that's when that's it starts making sense when the housing starts rounding out some of this raw you know industrial look you know where you have you know i-beams and and industrial looking um urban warehouse look and design if that's what they want yeah um but that's just, those are the things that start rounding it out when these um, when the landscape gets put in and the, the the flower beds and all of that really start taking shape and form and you've seen it since the last time you were here <laughs> crazy. I mean it's completely transformed dude that that's but. what's so crazy I mean even when we did that we even put that blog blog out and like people were just so like excited yeah. yeah you know what I mean and people were like they were just sharing it and that's why I'm I'm just like yo all right let's do it like let's do an update yeah. because this is obviously resonating and yeah. you know i definitely want to uh to stay in tune yeah. with what's going on and to see the progress hopefully you work me a good deal and we can be out here in tech city <laughs> he's coming you heard it he's, here he's, he's trying no you want and i want that's when you should build a huge screen that people you can just host the film festival once a year there you go. Uh, yeah there you go that'd be cool Somebody was talking about, oh, the property there, across There's going to be so many cool things you can do out They're here. They're talking about the property across the street of doing a, a uh, wood stock. Uh, <laughs> I think they call it a gator stock. Gator stock. <laughs>